Okay. <clears throat> We're ending up the study by Max Lucado. And this time it's called God is with you when you need grace. Perfect video for that. Absolutely amazing grace. So, in a little bit of review from what we did last week, remember I told you you're two people? Remember that? And some of you looked at me like, no, nah, I don't know. Uh, yeah, I have, a, I have, you know, an alter ego maybe, or I have angels on my shoulder. I have, you know, the good angel and the bad angel or the good angel and the bad angel or the bad angel and the bad angel, which sometimes I feel like I have whispering in my ear. That's not what I was talking about. What I'm talking about is you have a physical you and a spiritual you. And what I really liked what you had to say last week when I asked, are they in conflict? In other words, is your, are your ties to this world stronger than your wanting to go to another place? Wanting to go to heaven? And you said the friction is good. The friction between the two is very good. So this week, and I'm curious to see, go ahead, Brenda. Yeah, we talked about God is with you in the ordinary, when you're stuck in the storm, in the dark, in the valley. And now when you need grace, go ahead. Keep going. All right. How many of you are dog owners? There, oh, yeah, yeah. Of course, you love being dog owners. So you're going to recognize this right away, I think. If you're a dog owner, you've experienced your pet's shame when he or she does something wrong. Yes or no? What do they do when they do something wrong? Hang their head. What else? put their tails between their leg, go cower in a corner, blame it on the cat. <laughs> Cats are really different. Cats will do something and they, I don't care. It doesn't matter to me. We had a, a dog named Sadie, grew up with my kids. Absolutely wonderful dog. But if we were gone for just one minute over eight hours during the day, if we were gone for seven hours and 59 minutes, nothing would happen. At eight hours, I'm not kidding you. She had an internal clock in her mind. At eight hours and one minute, she would start digging. She would dig the flowers. She would dig the bushes. And the longer we were gone over eight hours, the more she would dig. And when we got home, we knew what to expect. She would be on the porch and she'd be just like this. If you're a dog owner, you've experienced your pet shame when he or she does something wrong. This is Max talking. Maybe you walk into the house after being out for the evening and the first thing you see are pieces of the couch cushion, cushion chewed up or the cake on the counter is mysteriously missing or, you know, the whole turkey for Thanksgiving, or, the, or right? Instead of greeting you at the door, your dog is off cowering in a corner, awaiting his punishment, ashamed of what he has done. I notice he puts always a he doing that, not the she. Humans aren't much different when we make mistakes. Our instinct is to run and hide, to avoid the call, the apology, and the text. But shame, this is important, shame will never heal us. At some point, confession, repentance, and restoration are needed. In the end, we find that even though the steps towards restoration are difficult, the restoration is completely worth it. Jesus understands our human failings. And I've made this series, this last lesson, into two parts. And I'm going to work with a part of Mary Magdalene's healing next week from The Chosen. It's just an absolute powerful video. Uh, 
Although his disciples spent nearly every moment with him during his time on earth, they were certainly not perfect like he was. They messed up frequently. Judas betrayed him into the hands of the Pharisees. And where we're going to stick today is this next part. Peter denied three times that he even knew Christ. The rest of the disciples abandoned Jesus at the cross. The disciples also had their failings when it came to Jesus' most staggering miracle, his resurrection from the grave. Most of them doubted. One of them refused to believe until he saw the evidence firsthand. Who, am I, who is he talking about here? Thomas? Let me ask you a question. Is human doubt, is that a sin? Is doubt a sin? Is doubt a sin? It's, it, it, it's easy. Yes or no? no? Or yes or no? Is doubt a sin? You say no. You said it can be. Bob, what did you say? Oh, I like the facts. That means that means I'm a constant sinner, right? Okay. So, Doug, you said no, very emphatically, no. What makes you say that? It's good to question. It's good to question even God and Christ. Let them give you the problem. Everyone hear that? So let's keep going. All right. I want to hone in on that. Shame will never heal us. Why not? And maybe you've never experienced shame in yourself or in other people. I'm just going to let that one hang a little bit. It leaves you what? What do you mean? Let me ask you, let's go right, let's go right back to the Garden of Eden. Adam and Eve experienced shame. Remember? How did they deal with it? How did Adam and Eve deal with their shame? They hid. What else? Covered themselves. Blamed. Go ahead, Brenda. Thanks. Here's what we need. We need confession. It's easy, right? I did it. Repentance, I'm sorry. What do I need to do now? But this word, restoration, what does that mean? To restore. Confession. Repentance. But what's this whole restoration thing? Because if there's still shame... Can there be restoration? I know I'm asking a lot of questions. Okay, let's keep going. The promise of the gospel. What is the promise of the gospel? What's the promise of the gospel? Jesus died for our sins. Believe in him and you will live. All right, I heard something else somewhere. Salvation. Salvation, okay? Here's what Max had to say about it. I think it's wonderful, go ahead. No matter how much we doubt, mess up, or fail, keep going. Jesus is ready to forgive us and be with us. 
He's ready to forgive us how many times? He's ready to forgive us how many times? Interesting. Very interesting. So, go ahead. Here's where Adam and Eve were. Justify and blame. But then, they experienced guilt and shame. And either one will keep you from restoration. I'd like to focus in on Peter today. And Max does a lot of different things when he talks, which we'll see in just a minute. But I want to focus in on Peter, his denial of Jesus, and next week, his restoration. It's beautiful. How Jesus restored Peter is absolutely beautiful. And he can restore us as well. Okay? Go ahead. Comments? Questions? Interesting. How he presents Peter. And if you read Acts, you know what he was talking about. Peter did present the first sermon after Jesus went back to where Jesus really wanted to be in heaven. Could Peter have done that if Jesus had not restored Peter? Do you think Peter could have done that if Jesus had not restored Peter? I know people who tell me, says, Gary, if you only knew what I had done in the past, I just cannot understand how Jesus could love me. I've left such a swath of destruction behind me. Even though I've come to Christ now, I can't forget about all of that. It's ever in front of me. In other words, no restoration has taken place. And if there's no restoration, what happens? I would love some answers. If there is not restoration, this is where we're headed. What happens or what does not happen? You live in guilt, that's what happens. Your faith, those are pretty strong words, Doug. Your faith dies. Can you expound that a little bit further? I knew when I wasn't faithful and believing, and I felt myself going down and down, and then he raised me up, and I'd go down again. Every time he raised me, hopefully I'm getting raised a little higher. But you've had valleys. Oh, yeah. Anyone else? Let's, let's go over what happened with Peter. And it's interesting. It's found in three Gospels. And if you put all, I put two of them. Uh, well, I'll put two of them up here. And I think the best one, I'm going to read to you the account out of Luke. But if you put all three together, you get a, a scenario of pretty much what went on. Brenda, go ahead. So here it is out of John, because this is who Max is highlighting. 
Simon Peter and another disciple were following Jesus. Of course, that would have been John. Now that disciple was known to the high priest. So he went with Jesus into the courtyard, the residence of the high priest. But Peter was standing outside the door. Allowed in, not allowed in. Okay? So the other disciple, John, who was known as the high priest, went out and spoke to the doorkeeper and brought Peter inside. Okay? Oh, by the way, just before this, Jesus has been arrested and taken in front of the Sanhedrin. And these two disciples that we know about are following. Okay, let's keep going. Then the servant girl, now Peter comes on inside. Then the servant girl who kept the door said to Peter, you are not one of the man's disciples, are you? Peter said, I am not. Now the servants and the officers had made a fire of coal because it was cold, and they were standing and warming themselves. And Peter was with them, standing and warming his, himself. Simon Peter was still standing and warming himself. So they said to him, you are not one of his disciples, are you? He denied it and said, I am not. One of the high priest servants, a relative of one whose ear Peter cut off, said, are you getting this? Remember when Peter lopped off that ear and Jesus put it back on? Did I not see you with him in the garden? So Peter denied it again, and immediately a rooster crowed. Keep going. So let's go back in time before the arrest, before the Garden of Gethsemane, where Jesus predicted this was going to happen. Peter said to him, Lord, where are you going? Jesus answered, where I'm going, you can't follow me now, but you will be able to follow later. Peter said to him, Lord, why can't I follow you now? I will lay down my life for you. Very adamant. Keep going. Jesus answered, will you really lay down your life for me? I assure you and most solemnly say to you before a rooster crows, you'll deny and completely disown me three times. That's a little different, isn't it? To completely disown is very different from denying, at least in my mind it is. Okay, keep going. So here we go. Let's take it out of Matthew. Peter replied to him, so they all fall away because of you and doubt and disown you. I will never fall away. Jesus said to him, I assure you and most solemnly say to you this night before a rooster crows, you will completely deny me three times. Peter said to Jesus, even if I have to die with you, I will not deny you. And all of the disciples said the same thing. So what happened in between this and in the courtyard? What happened? Keep going. Peter remembered the prophetic words of Jesus. This is after it happened now. When he said, before a rooster crows, you will deny me three times. And he went outside and wept bitterly. Now we get a little more here. He went outside and he wept bitterly. What does it mean to weep bitterly? Let me read it to you out of Luke. A servant girl saw him seated in the firelight. This is Peter. She looked closely at him and said, this man was with him. 
but he denied it. Woman, I don't know him. A little later, someone else saw him and said, you're one of them. Man, I am not, Peter replied. And about an hour later, another asserted, certainly this fellow was with him, for he's a Galilean. Peter replied, replied, man, I don't know what you're talking about. And just as he was speaking, the rooster crowed. But here's what Luke adds. The Lord turned and looked straight at Peter. Then Peter remembered the word the Lord had spoken to him. Before the rooster crows today, you will disown me three times. And he went outside and wept bitterly. If you put all three together, you get the entirety of what's going on. Guilt and shame. And it's interesting, when Jesus looked at him, what kind of eyes do you think Jesus was looking at him with? Because the eyes are the windows to your soul. What do you think those eyes told Peter? Now we jump. Jesus is risen. And it's interesting. Jesus told the disciples he was going to do this. Not once, but time after time after time. He performed miracle after miracle after miracle. Everything he said came true. He was fulfilling prophecy. They saw him raise people from the dead. And yet they didn't believe that he could do it. They doubted. But it happened. Now Peter has to face Jesus. What do you think is going through his mind? Keep going. How could Jesus forgive Peter? Don't you think that may have gone through Peter's mind? How can this man forgive me? Do you know what I just did? I vowed on my life that I would never forsake him. I would die with him. And then not only did I deny him, I disowned him. And in one version of the Bible, it, as, Mac, as Mac said, he swore like a sailor that he never knew him. He went right back to who he was before he met Christ. And then, last question, how did Jesus restore Peter? Oh, I really want to look at that next week. Go ahead, Bob. Anyone else? Boy, if you think that the things that you've done keep you from Christ, please understand this is why Christ died. 
no matter what you've done, no matter what I've done. You say, well, Gary, you've never done the thing that I've done. You don't know what's inside my head. And Jesus made it very clear what you think and what you do are the same thing. I'd like to end with a video. How many of you know who Lauren Daigle is? Go ahead. If you've ever felt too far from Christ, you ever think that what I've done keeps me in my guilt and my shame, Come talk to me. Come talk to others. This is why Jesus went to the cross. Because no matter what we've done, no matter what we're going to do, He wants to forgive us, He wants to restore us. Father in heaven, Thank you for finishing what you started. When you said it is finished, that means that you paved a road so big for us to spend eternity with you, free of guilt, free of shame, forever. Amen.